In this video, we're doing some flower photography, but not ordinary flowers. In fact, we're shooting Lego flowers. Uh, we're taking a really close up look at the colors, textures, geometry, and shapes of the Lego pieces that make up these interesting plastic bouquets. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today we're delving into the abstract and we're taking a look at something that often gets overlooked when you're thinking about toy photography and particularly Lego photography and that is the close-up design of the individual pieces. A lot of the time Lego photography boils down to placing some characters in a scene and that can be really fun in fact we've done it before um, but today I want to take a look at these adult Lego flower sets. They come as uh, a set with all sorts of different replica flowers uh, meant to be ornaments in your home of course after building them up and in enjoying that process, um, but there's some really interesting shapes and geometry in some of these curved, highly colourful pieces that I want to take a look at and see if we can't turn into some abstract photography. So if you're not a Lego fan like I am, uh, you might not even be aware that Lego make these um, uh, flower bouquet sets designed for adults to give you that sort of tactile therapy of putting something together, but they also act as ornaments that you can have in your home. Obviously they're flowers that aren't going to wilt and die, so that's a plus, but they're also nice and colorful to have in your room. And at first glance, they do really look quite a lot like the, the real counterparts. The thing that I really like about them though, is that they actually repurpose a lot of older classic pieces um, that we don't see a lot in other sets anymore. For example, this is a sort of a water butt or trough piece um, like a barrel but it's been repurposed in green to create the base of this flower. Over here we've got lots of different colored pirate hats but in the orientation that they're placed in and of course because there's so many of them they look like the buds of a flower. So this has given me the inspiration to uh, get a little bit closer to some of these older unique pieces and see if we can't make a nice abstract image or series of images using some lighting and our macro lens. Before I even start shooting today, there's one thing that I need to take care of that could potentially ruin every single one of my shots and that is dust. I plan to get really, really close up and I want nice smooth curves without all of the uh, gathered little dust particles showing up in my images. Uh, my flowers have been out on display in my house for a couple of months now, so a healthy layer of dust has uh, accumulated on some of the flat parts, as well as in all of those nooks and crannies between all of the Lego pieces. This is notoriously hard to deal with when it comes to Lego because dusting with a big feather duster or something like that will potentially break pieces off and that's how it all gets scattered and eventually broken. The way that I'm going to be eliminating my dust today is actually by using a makeup brush. If you just go and grab one of these, it doesn't have to be anything special, uh, just a fairly firm makeup brush will do. And you can go in and slowly paint away all of that dust, all of the little uh, bristles of the brush will get into the nooks and crannies between all the studs and uh, hopefully take away as much dust as possible. I promise you it takes a lot less time to double check your Lego pieces now for dust and hairs and fingerprints than it does to uh, clone out all of those things later on. I can't overstate the importance, just making sure you give everything a clean, be it for Lego photography or any other kind of close-up product photography where things are expected to be clean. Um, just make sure to double check for uh, dust and particles, but also make sure not to leave any fingerprints there because they will show up as well, especially when you start introducing some lighting. As I've mentioned, my goal for today is to 
uh, abstract these Lego pieces, make them look uh, like something other than what they actually are. Uh, I want to get really close up and uh, take a look at some of the curves, the, uh, the reflections, the textures, and maybe uh, obscure the fact that we're shooting Lego uh, all together. Um, lighting is going to play a huge part in that process. Um, these Lego pieces, although they're mostly strange colours, they will still probably be uh, recognisable to some extent to anybody that has seen uh, these curves up close before. I'm currently um, polishing off some car bonnets that have made up this lovely little flower just here, um, but with some lighting, particularly coloured lighting, and making use of the curves and the reflections, I'm hoping to make them look um, more like abstract pieces of art than pieces of uh, Lego cars. So as usual, I have my uh, lighting all ready to go in the form of the Adapter Look Studio. This is the control pod up here, which provides all of the power and control for our own lights. And it's sat on a mini tripod so that I can use it on the tabletop. Into this plugs our lighting arms, and this is where the magic happens. We have flexible colored lights that can be easily placed in all sorts of different positions to really take advantage of the, uh, the curves and the shapes of our pieces of Lego. I want to be placing these lights to reflect from the certain uh, curves, or maybe backlight certain pieces, and I'm going to be using the colors and the diffusion to uh, change the way that my light actually looks, um, and really try to obscure the fact that these are in fact Lego pieces. I'm going to start off shooting now by placing my lighting down, picking a few choice pieces of Lego to take a look at. So the first thing I'm actually doing is just moving around with my camera, taking a look at different angles on these bouquets. Because they're all nicely set up in strange and interesting positions already, I'm not going to have to pose them too much, I don't think. Uh, there's lots of nice combinations of different colored pieces all set together, and they're at unusual angles, so they might obscure the uh, individual pieces just that little bit more. Now I am shooting really, really close up, so this is a, a reverse lens setup with a large extension tube that's going to get me a lot of magnification. It might also add a little bit of distortion uh, and certainly a very shallow depth of field, but just for this exploration phase, I don't think that's a huge issue. What I will do once I've decided on a few angles to shoot is set up on my tripod and maybe try some focus stacks. However, one of the decisions you need to make when you're doing this is whether or not you want everything to be perfectly in focus. If you do, you might want to try some focus stacking. If you think that a nice soft focus might be better, uh, it will certainly add a little bit more obscurity to what you're shooting, uh, then you can just go ahead and start shooting, maybe even staying freehand. I'm finding with my flowers that because there's such a mishmash of different colors and shapes all in close proximity like this, getting really close up really makes some interesting shots. We've got lots of greens in the background and uh, bright colors in the foreground, maybe some blues and purples. Uh, for example, these little pirate hats that I mentioned earlier on are really interesting with their curves, and then they fold off into some more geometric squares and sharper angles into the background, which is a really interesting mix. It's like sort of shooting some alien flowers rather than some real flowers and it's certainly a different challenge because we have those reflections because things aren't quite as organic as they should be and I think it really adds to that abstract nature of the images. As I'm exploring and experimenting with my flowers um, I'm also experimenting with my lighting because we've got these flexible, continuous LED lights, uh, we can actually um, continually change our lighting uh, to suit what we're looking at. Uh, we can always see the result as it's going to be on the back of the camera. So if you make a little change and you don't quite like it, you can change it back or you can try a different color or a different light placement and really um, play around with trial and error 
to find what is going to suit your particular composition. And with the amount of depth in these flowers, as we already talked about, it's really nice to be able to get precise lighting on the different parts of your image. If you've got different colors in the foreground or um, different shapes in the background, you can make uh, take advantage of that by placing your lighting in a specific way to maybe reflect or backlight off these uh, really interesting Lego pieces. One of my favorite things to do with macro photography is to exploit that super magnification and maybe try and trick people into thinking that uh, what they're looking at is something other than what it actually is. And with our Lego flowers, that's certainly um, an achievable goal. Um, obviously, these are never going to look like real flowers. You can't even shoot them like real flowers because we have uh, a different texture. We have um, no transparency on the petals and and if you look too closely, you'll very quickly realize that they're inorganic, not real flowers. However, they do make for a fantastic subject for experimentation and that use of abstract art to create some nice, pleasing images. I'm really happy with the approach that I've taken today, just playing around and experimenting. And I do recommend that if you have anything like this at home, that you give that a go as well. It's really nice to just pick up a macro lens and go looking around, experimenting with your lighting and practicing a bit of composition. Let me know if you have any of these Lego flowers in your own home and whether or not you can get some interesting shots out of them. I'm pretty happy with my shots today. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. For now, that is all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.